Next, we are very lucky to have uh, Professor Wesley Winterbottom, who is a professor of science at Gateway Community College in New Haven. Uh, Wes currently teaches chemistry, environmental science, and regulations and utility management. He also oversees the college's water management, clean water management, and public utility management programs. Wes is a Connecticut professional engineer and holds degrees from Lehigh University, Cornell University, Cornell, ever heard of it? All my office fans out there, thanks. And uh, also the University of Connecticut. So let's all give uh, Wes a warm welcome. So thank you. I, uh, I teach an extra course at Central in the uh, School of Engineering. It's engineering technical writing and presentations, which probably sounds like a boring class, but it's one of the best classes I ever teach. And I always say the worst time to talk is right after lunch because people are sleeping. So I want you guys to wake up and pay attention because there's a quiz when this is over. <laughs> OK, hopefully my clicker will work here. OK. Uh, oh, there we go. OK, so I'm going to talk about two big things today. One is uh, what are high schools doing in Connecticut for workforce development? And secondly is what are colleges in Connecticut doing for workforce development? Because we're doing things at Gateway, Charter Oak is doing some things, and Southern Connecticut State University is doing some things as well. Okay, so high schools, Regional Water Authority is involved, <coughs> the MDC is involved, Ella Grass O Tech School in Groton is involved, and there's also something that our legislature did, which is Public Act 10-150, which has to do with the Connecticut Technical and Career High Schools. So there's quite a few things going on in high schools for workforce development. So Regional Water Authority has, since 2011, their uh, Environmental Careers Summer Camp. And it's a week-long program uh, uh, that they get kids from Common Ground High School, which is the, one of the two environmental themed magnet schools in New Haven. And it focuses on environmental based careers, but it also gets a bit into uh, drinking water as well. And that's some of the things that they cover. They talk about watersheds, lake sampling, water treatment, invasive species, forestry, they also uh, take a tour of a water treatment plant and uh, they do some sampling. They also make a visit to Gateway Community College. They're coming in on the afternoon of uh, June 27th. It's always one of the highlights of my summer because these kids are delightful, these kids are enthusiastic, and these kids are interested in uh, working in the utility industry. So there's some pictures that uh, Regional sent to me recently of, from last summer's program. And the MDC has something called the Learn and Earn program, which is a month-long uh, program that they have. It's for high school students, generally juniors and seniors, from the towns that the MDC provides water and, and sewer service to. Last summer, it was Hartford, West Hartford, Windsor, Rocky Hill, and Wethersfield. And the neat thing about it is students are treated as employees. They get hired, they have to fill out timesheets, they're paid, uh, and it's great. And it's a two week program, uh, two weeks, uh, I I'll be doing it this summer with Dave Kosminski from the Portland Water Company. And then uh, we have them for field trips and lab, work, lab activities, things like that. And then they get embedded for two weeks in internships within the MDC. So uh, there's some of the labs that, uh, that we did last summer, drop in the bucket, pathogens, dilutions, you know, make a water filter. That's interesting to see what kids put together to, to make a water filter. Uh, filtration, turbidity, watershed, Connecticut River Academy. We take them out on the Connecticut River. And uh, they get presentations by the MDC staff, human resources, field services, customer service, um, 
natural resources, take them out to Bark Hampstead to, to see forestry management. And they have presentations. Uh, Craig Metaskey came last summer, talk about wastewater certification. We get Bill Sullivan from the health department come and talk about wastewater or, uh, drinking water certification. And then there's some of the field trips, the meter shop, command center, the West Hartford filters. Anybody ever been to the West Hartford filters? <coughs> this is something you should see. This is 1915, 1920 technology. It's unbelievable. These filters are an acre, an acre and a half in size. I was pleased that I got to see that last summer. I live close there, but I've never been inside it. It's absolutely amazing technology. Stuff works out. Turns out great water, but it's not exactly state of the art. Uh, the command center, uh, the MDC laboratory, we take them to the Rocky Hill Water Pollution Control Facility. Uh, the reservoirs, Bark Hampstead Forest, Customer Service Center, and the MDC headquarters. And there's a couple of pictures of the kids that we had last summer. And they were embedded in operations, water treatment, engineering, uh, procurement, and information technology. And like I say, it's two weeks of field trips and lectures and lab work, and then two weeks of embedded uh, internships. The kids we had were great for that as well. So El Grasso Regional Technical High School, which is in Groton, they have a wastewater program. They can take the California State University of Sacramento. It's basically Sacramento One. And if they do uh, work-based learning, uh, they can take the complete uh, Sacramento One, which means by the time they graduate from high school, they'll have 11.9 CEUs, which gives them enough uh, CEUs to take the wastewater one cer certification examination. So that's going on. That's been a longstanding program. And um, I had a meeting a couple of weeks ago uh, with the health department and with water companies uh, about this exact same subject matter, workforce. And somebody at that meeting said, hey, at El Grasso, they used to have a program in uh, drinking water treatment uh, as well. And apparently that's something that existed there in the past. It's not there right now, but there's interest in the drinking water industry about trying to bring, th bring that back. And perhaps the most interesting things for high schools is this public act. This was passed by the legislature. The Regional Water Authority was the driving force behind it. And basically what it says is that the principals of the Votech high schools are supposed to be connecting with natural gas, electricity, water, and wastewater utilities, as well as the two colleges that offer utility management programs in Connecticut, which is Gateway and Southern Connecticut State University to develop curriculums in the Votech high schools. So I think that's a real opportunity for this group to get involved, to see if they're con convinced, if they talk to some of the technical high schools about having more programs besides just the one program that exists at uh, El Grasso uh, right now and uh, opens the door for you. Okay, with colleges, what we have is uh, at Gateway, we have a Certificate of Achievement in Water Management. Uh, Charter Oak State Colleges gives credits for CEUs, which I'll be talking about, uh, credits for certifications, excuse me. Uh, Gateway, we have an associate's degree in utility management at Southern. They have a bachelor's degree in utility management. And uh, we've been having some conversations about a, a certificate in utility management with Gateway and Southern for people who uh, already have a four-year degree but are interested in utility management. And then we've recently started offering non-credit uh, wastewater courses. Art Enderley from East Windsor is currently teaching a course for us now which will run through June, I believe. So we'll get into the, the detail a bit on all of those. The, the utility management programs that we have at Gateway and Southern are the only programs of its kind, their kind in the country. So they're very, very, uh, very, very unique. So uh, the, gate, the water management program, it's in its fourth decade. It's well established. Uh, we've run through hundreds of water treatment plant operators over the years. And uh, people who <coughs> complete that program are qualified to take the class four treatment and class three distribution certification examinations given by the health department. And if they pass, then they get an operator and train the examination. In 2022, uh, the pass rate on those examinations was 86%. So 
so it's uh, it's it's it, you know it's way up there. It, it's, it seems to be a very successful. Uh, it's a very <coughs> successful program, and after they get the experience requirements, then they can uh, the li the licenses be become uh, become permanent. And um, oh, there that's what I just said there. So, and the interesting thing about that is more than half the people who go through the water management program already have a four-year degree. So I, I have the good fortune of teaching some of those classes and I would teach those classes for free because the students are interested, they're motivated, they do all the work and it's really a lot of fun. Uh, but the, the nice thing about it is it attracts people who already have a four-year, uh, already have a four-year degree. And that's the courses that they have to take. There's a course in utility management, there's a course in environmental regulations, there's water treatment and distribution, special topics in water treatment, special topics in distribution. And like I say, the pass rate is, uh, is pretty good. And uh, we've had a couple of special water management programs. Twice the uh, Regional Water Authority has paid Gateway to take a cohort of their employees, generally is between 15 and 20 of their employees, to train them to be water treatment and distribution system uh, operators. And that's been, that's been fairly successful. And uh, this is something else that, that this group should think about. We were paid in 2011 to run a dozen people through the water management program over the summer. And it was funded by the Connecticut Department of Labor. I don't know the details of it. I was involved from the teaching perspective. I don't know the ins and outs of the grant and things like that in nature, but that's something that this group should think about given the status of what the workforce is, is that maybe the Department of Labor might be able to come up with some bucks. So uh, more, some more training can be done. And uh, Charter Oak is kind of interesting. Everybody know what Charter Oak is? It's the college without borders. It's mostly the online college. Charter Oak is neat because they can take credits from this college, credits from that college, credits you earn through Charter Oak, roll them all together and come up with a degree. So it's a really good thing. And I didn't know they could do this till about five years ago. I was paid to look at the class four uh, water treatment license that the health department gives out and the class three water, oper water distribution operator license that they give out and convert that to college credits. And it ended up coming out to be 35 college credits if you have a class four uh, water treatment license and 31 college credits if you have a class three water distribution license. And um, that is something that potentially could be done for wastewater operator licenses as well, which might give people an incentive who have a class one, two, three, four license to get those converted to credits and then perhaps continue education beyond that point. Uh, and so that's, that's something definitely worth thinking about. There's a whole process for doing that. Uh, Charter Oak does it. I've been told that we could actually do it ourselves at Gateway. I don't know the ins and outs of that because I just talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but that's something else that I think should be considered as well. And uh, we have an associate's degree in public utility management and um, students are prepared to enter the workforce upon completion of their studies and they can also transfer seamlessly to um, Southern Connecticut State University which has a bachelor's degree in utility management. And the courses are offered both uh, in person and online with, with, the, the, uh, with our program at Gateway. You could essentially could take the whole program uh, remotely. I should have said that about the water management program. Um, with the water management program, all those courses were teaching live remote online because New Haven's not the center of the universe. So you can attend class and we generally run those classes starting at five in the afternoon. So everybody's done working for the day. Seems to work out pretty well. We do the same with the utility management classes and we have practicing industry experts uh, here. Ray Barr is somebody's uh, one of the adjuncts that uh, teaches customer relations for us and asset and infrastructure management. And uh, re an interesting thing too is residents of other New England states can take those courses at, at a tuition rate that's slightly above the in-state 
but way below the out-of-state tuition rate. So we're trying to expand the target audience uh, beyond, uh, beyond Connecticut. And they have to take some general education courses, statistics, composition, advanced composition, you know, some business courses, there's some economics, there's spreadsheets, there's accounting. Uh, then there's the, those are the five program specific courses, utility management, environmental regulations, customer relations, asset and infrastructure management, and rates and revenues. And we have internships uh, available as well. I just had a conversation a couple of weeks ago with the regional water authority because they're interested in uh, having some of our students be interns there. And uh, these are the sources of scholarships that we have for the um, drinking water and the uh, utility management program at Gateway. So we have foundation scholarships, we have regional water authority, Connecticut section of the American Water Works Association, Connecticut Power and Energy Society just gave us a scholarship, uh, Claire C. Bennett Watershed Fund, and also well as the town of Winstead Water has a special uh, scholarship that they do. They have a fishing contest every year on the reservoir and the money that they raise, they uh, have a scholarship which includes complete tuition for the water management program as well as an internship. And uh, then there's the uh, pledge to advance Connecticut. That's quote unquote free community college. That's something else we're thinking about. So it's, yeah, you gotta be a Connecticut high school graduate. There's strings attached to it, of course. First-time college students should be uh, full or part-time. You can got to take six plus credits per semester. You have to enroll in a de degree or certificate program and maintain good academic standing. So that's something that's relatively new. This is we're just finishing our first ac academic year with uh, the PAC program. And uh, Southern has their utility management program which builds on the skills that people learn at Gateway. There's some of the courses that uh, Southern takes there. We, we function at Gateway, we, func we focus more on the nuts and bolts of the utility management. Southern, they get into leadership and the management side of things a bit more than, uh, than we do. So there's corporate finance, business policy and strategy, management and organization, international business. And, um, they, they, they've got some uh, elective coursework, not-for-profit, project management, GIS, team managerial skills, and they also offer internships the way that we do. And they've got some uh, scholarship money specific for the utility management program uh, as well. And like I say, the utility management program is the only programs of their kind in the United States, and, and UConn is potentially going to get a big grant from um, the, D the U.S. Department of Energy for the smart grid for the New England states, New York, and uh, Puerto Rico, and um, some of that money, uh, th they're going to use the Gateway program and the Southern program as models for uh, to roll them out nationally for utility management programs. And this is uh, with Gateway and Southern, our relationship is such that if you do the uh, water management program, all those courses fit into the associate's degree program. And then all the, the, the program, the courses for your associate's degree go into the bachelor's degree. And you know, this is something that there's no reason we can't work out something uh, for wastewater courses uh, as well. So they would fit into an associate's degree and then a bachelor's degree in uh, utility management. So that's a nice transition. We've had a lot of people do that. That's attractive to students, that everything fits together well. And uh, you know, the concept of a uh, certificate in utility management is something that we're actively discussing because a lot of students, especially with our water management program, already have a four-year degree, and they're not interested in coming back and getting a second bachelor's degree. So the idea is that they potentially could get a uh, certificate in utility management. You know, cred credentialing is a big deal with colleges now. You don't have to get another degree, but let's come up with some creative way to get your credentials, to get you hired so you'll be attractive in the labor force. And Southern is also thinking about starting up an MBA program. 
specifically in utility management. I, I don't think it's gotten that far, but they are having conversations about that. And what we started recently, just this past spring, is now we're starting to offer uh, wastewater courses again using the California University at Sacramento uh, books. And uh, the, uh, upon completion of the course that we're currently running now, you earn 11.9 CEUs and all the CEUs will be accepted by the Connecticut DEP because the CEUs are from um, California State University at Sacramento. And discussions um, we're having with Connecticut WIA is what courses would we like to offer again? And those courses, uh, our Enderlay is teaching a course right now, and uh, the courses are taught live, live remote online as well. So you don't have to come to New Haven or wherever. You can do it uh, from your house. And it seems, I just talked to Art earlier today, it seems like it's going, things are going along pretty well. And we have some funding for that. Um, it's in the non-credit side, so it's a little bit different than that, but the funding that we have covers tuition, books, supplies, and the cost of the exam. And you know the whole, the whole idea behind it and doing through non-credit is upon completion of that, um, you're ready to enter the workforce. And we've got uh, a lot of towns have tuition reimbursements, so some of the tuition needs are being met that way. If you're on supplemental nutritional assistance program, uh, you can potentially could be funded through that. We have the DeLuca Foundation at Gateway. I think with the class that we have now, we gave out six $500 scholarships uh, to help people with that if they were paying their own way. And there's also something called the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, uh, which again is to, to help people access employment and to match employers with skilled workers needed to complete, compete in the global economy. You know, the point is that, you know, the, this is through the Connecticut Department of Labor. You know, they need to know that there is a huge workforce shortage and having a group like this approach them uh, would be very, very helpful to hear it directly from the people who are the employers. And uh, we are gonna be applying for that through the New Haven Workforce Board to receive approval from the uh, Connecticut Department of Labor. So that would start hopefully in September. And uh, there's my contact information at Gateway. And uh, he had to leave, unfortunately, but my counterpart at Southern is, is Dr. Min J. Lee. He's the director of the utility management program at uh, Southern. And uh, one more slide. And uh, this is one of the reasons I have such a nice life because I get to work with utilities and uh, you know the, the health department, the DEEP, the Connecticut section of AWWA, the Connecticut Water Works Association, the New England Water Environment Association, Connecticut Power and Energy, Connecticut Water Environment Association, and the Drinking Water, Wastewater, Natural Gas, and Electric Utilities, and their consultants all make my life a lot easier because I can pick up the phone and say, can you help me with this? And I always get a very, very nice, sure, what, what can we do for you, Wes? So just want to thank everybody for that. And that's, that's my presentation. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to Happy to answer. No questions? One question. Yep. Uh, Art, we have a dozen? Yeah. There's a dozen. Yeah. So a, a dozen people participating now in the program and, that and Art's that, running. That's yeah, fantastic. That, yeah, the course that we're running now, and hopefully we can we can ratchet we can ratchet that up. As a matter of fact, there's a student sitting right behind you, Tyler. I uh, passed my wastewater operator one uh, test back in March as well from it, so. Yeah, that's the, that's the whole go is, the, is, the, is to increase the pass rate on the uh, Connecticut DEP certification 
examinations. And before we started this, I contacted Craig Metaskin and said, please send me the pass rates for the last couple of years, which he, he, which he did. So hopefully after we start to run these courses, we will see that the pass rate comes up because that's, that's what we're trying to do. You know, one of my old bosses used to say when he met with industry that uh, we're your college. We're here to serve you as best we can. So please think of you know, Gateway and Southern and Charter Oak as, you know, we're your college. We're here to help you any way that I can. Just let us know how we can help you best because that's what we do for a living. Uh, can you tell us more about how you're getting people into the community college? Like, where are you tracking them from? Are you going after them in middle school or high school? Because you heard me speak about trying to get more people interested in this field, and we got to start early enough because a lot of times what we're hearing from uh, the, the high schools is once they get to that level, yeah. they get to their guidance counselors, they may already have a path pick. So what are you guys doing on the community college level to kind of you know, give people direction at a young enough age where they pick a community college in, in our field, of course. Yeah, so one, one of the things we do is there's a Connecticut Association of School Guidance Counselors. So we, we've worked with them, um, we work with them quite a bit. You know, we do the regional law authority with what they do. We participate in the Learn and Earn program at the MDC. Um, that's, but that's, you know, you're, you're right. You know, it's, by the time you get to middle school or high school, that's where kids start thinking about what they want to do. So the earlier that you can contact them, the better. You know, what do we do in terms of contacting the industry? We send out flyers to all the water companies, all the wastewater facilities. Um, you know, we're trying to knock on the door a little bit better with the, with the electrical energy industry and with the um, natural gas industry as well. We got a little bit more work to do to have better uh, connections with them. But, you know, we, we knock ourselves out to, to fill the classrooms. The water management program, the, cla the classes typically sell out, which I think reflects the workforce. And, you know, if we've got with the first class we're running with art, we've got 12, that's pretty good. But, you know, the, I, think the, I think the battle you're fighting is, which, you know, which you, you're very familiar with is, Working for utility is like a well-hidden secret. You talk to people who work for utilities. Most people, you know, somebody was talking, it was um, mentioned earlier today that uh, the wastewater is like a family. And it is kind of like a family. You know, everybody knows, I tell my students, don't screw up because if you screw up, everybody's going to know about it because everybody knows everybody. <laughs> but, you know, that's part of it. And, but, you know, we just have to do a little bit of, everybody has to do a little better job selling the profession. Because generally, you know, what, what we see at Gateway with the water management program is we get people that, you know, we don't, get, we don't get a lot of kids right out of high school. But we get people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. Oh, I could work in the utility industry and make eighty, ninety, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 a year and have job security for the rest of my life. And when they find that out, you know what? They come and they sign up for classes. So we, you know, we spend a lot of time recruiting. That's a big part of what we do. And then one of the nice things that's going to help, I think, is the 12 community colleges are being merged into one called in Connecticut State. So there's going to be one catalog for all the state co community colleges. And that one catalog will have the utility management program, will have the water management program, and the wastewater list. And so everybody's going to see that. And then they'll see, yeah, it's offered by Gateway. So I think that's going to help too, because there's not going to be 12 individual catalogs. It's gonna, everything's being merged. And the logistics of that just boggles my mind, but the, the wizards of Smart and Hartford are figuring out how to mer merge everything together. It's still out in the draft form, but it'll hit the streets probably in the middle of, middle of August. Any other questions from anybody? Okay, well, thank you for the opportunity to, to talk to you today. Oh, one more? Oh, one more? Okay, sorry. Hi, so I, I work heavily with like the university level engineering students and so on. And, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of talented kids who are like being sort of like siphoned into things like crypto and things like that, tech kids. 
who I think ha if they know that such things as water, uh, water treatment uh, exist, and there's a lot of science and tech involved in there, we can kind of draw them in. Uh, any thoughts on how do we bridge that gap to kind of like pull them away from those things to get them interested in something else? Yeah, that's, uh, that's tough. The, the, the meeting I had a couple of weeks ago uh, with all the water companies and the health department, I was listening to, I think the per gentleman was from Bristol, but said something like, it may, it may, part of it may be salaries. You know, that, uh, you know, some, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that, you know, somebody wants to go into crypto or any of that kind of stuff and, well, if it pays more, uh, you know, that may be part of it. It's, it's you know, it's a, like I say, that I think that the biggest thing that seems to work when I, when I try and sell people to, on the program is, yeah, it's a nice place to work. People are generally pretty decent to each other. And uh, most people who start working for utilities stay working with utilities. And it's, you know, it's not as sexy, as sexy as cryptocurrency, but you know what? <laughs> Some of those cryptocurrency companies have failed and you know what? The water's still flowing, the natural gas, the electricity's still coming, and uh, they're always gonna be there. So uh, I don't have any quick and dirty answers for you. You just gotta, you gotta keep working at it. And you people here, you know, th there's a lot of eyes and ears here that can try and sell this stuff to uh, students because a lot of the people we get at Gateway is, oh, I have a friend who works there, or my next door neighbor works there. And they, you know, they've told me what they do, and hey, can you, can you, can you set up a tour at a water treatment plant? Because I want to see what this is all about. That's another way to, you know, another way to bring them in. And like I say, with the water management program, um, four and a half of those students already have a four-year degree. And it's like, well, I can come to Gateway and take 18 credits and make $90,000 a year. Yep, that's the way it works. Well, that's the best answer I can give you. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, thank you very much.